the mystery theory. Today I am doing part four of Miss Dover, which is going to be a full month of new videos every day for the month of October. Now, today it's going to be soft-spoken because my uploads are all messed up. It was supposed to be for Wednesday, but I know a lot of people like this soft-spoken videos and I decided to still upload one soft-spoken this week. Today we are going to cover love in the time of Mr. Goodbar. This takes place in the club scene of the 1970s and 80s where, as they say, it was endless partying, but at the time, this specific place, single hangouts could be deadly. Now, one of the most controversial novels of the 1970s is a Judith Judith Rosner's best-selling looking for Mr. Goodbar. This novel caused the stir when it was published back in 1975 in a bigger one, actually, when the film based on it was released shortly after in 1977. The story explored the double life of a repressed school teacher. Now, her name was Theresa Dunn, and during the day, she worked with deaf children, while at night, she would frequent New York City single bars cruising, we're looking for casual, rough partners. As you can probably imagine, it really can't end well, this double lifestyle, and it doesn't. Though Dunn's character in the novel is complicated, she wants a liberated life. But she's self-destructive and has father issues. The film itself was um, kind of a intended to be a cautionary tale. 
the idea that engaging in promiscuous, promiscuous behavior with strangers can be deadly. Now, this novel and movie was based on real life events. So, looking for Mr. Goodbar basically terrified a generation raised on the ideal of free love. For many, the party was over, at least for a little while. Now, let's talk about the real Mr. Goodbar. And then, overall, this, I don't know, so um, popular novel. In early January 1973, 28-year-old Roseanne Quinn didn't show up for work. One morning at the St. Joseph's School for Deaf, children, this is a children's school in the Bronx. Concerned about her, a colleague went to her apartment, where she and the building superintendent discovered Roseanne Quinn's body covered in blood. For what they could see, she has been stabbed repeatedly, and there is some kind of um, uh, adult activity. You can kind of put that two and two together um, when I have to upload these videos sometimes using that word, the three-letter word, it makes the uploads take a lot longer. So, since I want to share a new video every day, I'm gonna try to remind myself to find other words. Last time I did that, somebody got offended because she understood what I meant yet she got offended because I could have chosen other words guys I try my best I am not a dictionary <laughs> now in the New York Daily News a neighbor described this lady, Roseanne, as a very nice, quiet, and shy lady. She wore, according to the neighbor, skirts and blouses, and not quote-unquote hippie stuff. Also, the neighbors noticed and shared with the authorities that she was the type of girl who would have a guy in if he brought her home and indicated delicately that from what they've heard what they heard. Um, she may have enjoyed the company of these guys by engaging in adult activities in a 
rough way. A few days after Gwen's, that's her last name, body was found, police arrested a 23-year-old drifter named John Wayne Wilson. I guess we are having a problem with this John Wayne's. I wouldn't name my son John if Wayne was my last name. Apparently, there's a pattern here. He soon, this guy, John Wayne, he soon confessed that he had met Roseanne in a singles bar and that he went home with her. He also confesses of being very upset when she insulted him. So he took her life. Wilson was diagnosed, you know, this John Wayne Wilson was diagnosed as severely mentally ill and took his own life while waiting for his trial. Now, the straight single women of New York weren't the only ones thinking twice after that about their dating habits in the 1970s. Between 1974 and September of 1975, 14 gay men in the San Francisco area were I don't know how else to call it, by a guy, the nickname, the doodler. He apparently cruised gay bars to find victims and would draw sketches of them to break the ice. Wow. Maybe it worked in the 1970s, but if a guy would draw a sketch of me, I think that'd be creepy. Just saying. How time changes in people, too. Once he got them alone, he would um, stab them to death. The Doodler, this guy, didn't have a type. His victims included drag queens, leather bar denizens, businessmen, and lawyers. At one point, the police were fairly certain they had identified killer. But only two guys survived the attacks. And they were so afraid of this guy that they were reluctant to cooperate. They were worried about testifying in court, not wanting to admit publicly that they were gay, which I can't blame them back then. It was kind of a topic not everyone wanted to talk about. So, in the end, the toddler was never caught. Now, there are a lot of factors involved in this 
Mr. Goodbar idea. Um, but let's explore a couple of them. There, there are a, there's something called the lethal barflies. According to this, lounges have long served as hunting grounds for serial killers. Serial killers seek their prey in all corners. But according to this theory, taverns, bars were especially popular with these three pickup artists. And I'm going to tell you three different what they call pickup artists. Glenn Rogers, aka the Casanova Killer. He was a blue eyed, smooth talker who pick up, picked up blondes and redheads in bars, persuaded them to drive him home, then stab or strangle them. He has been sentenced to death in two separate trials. Then we have number two, George Russell. And he was an attractive young man who frequented the is it yuppie night <laughs> nightclubs of um, Bellevue, Bellevue, Washington, in the summer of 1990? Russell's crimes were notable for how savage they were and how degrading he left the bodies, possessions. He was convicted on three charges of first degree murder. Michael Lupo, a flower shop manager in London, cruised the city's homosexual bars in 1986 having contracted the HIV virus, Lupo was on a campaign to exact revenge against the gay population. He strangled four men and attempted to murder two others before he was apprehended. Lupo died in prison in 1995 serving four life sentences. Now the other aspect of this concept of Mr. Goodbar. There was a, an outrage reaction when a film about the gay club scene is attacked as homophobic. Let me briefly explain. Director William, and I'm gonna butcher his last name, is it Fredkins? Um, he did a adult explicit movie based on a novel by the same name and inspired by true events. It was released in 1980 and the story was about a cop played by Al Pacino. By the way, I 
love Al Pacino movies, but don't know about this one. It also caused outrage within the gay community. Protesters objected to the plot, which followed um, Al Pacino's as he went undercover to infiltrate Manhattan's gay S and M scene. All that to track down a serial killer. He was criti- criticized as homophobic and exploitative, equating homosexuals with depravity and criminal behavior. Now, let's round up this case or story because Mr. Goodbar mm, idea that they were sharing in this article I was reading about it's kind of a combination of things that were looked down at the time Um, people sadly looked down at ladies who enjoyed a different lifestyle a different way in to enjoy their adult time and almost put a you must fit this category of a good person only if you have a boyfriend and you're committed if you're a married lady if you're a single lady waiting for the right guy and so at the time the idea of lady going out at night to bars for single was very looked down upon the other side of the story is the gay bars and how being gay was not acceptable at the time and um, how it was so I don't even know how to say it it was so taboo that people wouldn't want to talk about it and they just didn't want to know about it but there was no denying this was happening it was happening often in the 70s and serial killers decided to frequent these places that were looked down by society or people that thought knew better I am not going to get into how things have changed or not I think that very deep inside we all know that things have changed we see them we appreciate the change but I think we also know that it's still not okay for society to Uh, it is not okay let's put it that way it is still not it's your choice it's your body it's your life you get to choose what you want to be or who you want to be or who you want to hang out with Um, 
it is more like things have improved but every time we see a friend of ours or somebody we know we know as that you know that if they're going to bars like in the case of a woman by herself things have been more accepting and but still not to the point where you do you in some of the cases that i shared recently like uh, i want to say mccluskey but the girl that was killed by her boyfriend at the u here in utah she met him in a bar and i've read quite a few stories like that and i think that the point of this um article is not condemning people for doing that but more to kind of raise awareness that some of those places where people go to have fun have been and continue to be targeted by people that are not in their right mind people that are looking for trouble and it kind of uh, reminds us the importance of being aware of our surroundings and being aware of people around us and just be careful i don't see anything wrong with people having fun however they have fun i don't go to bars i don't drink i don't don't enjoy the particular scene but i don't see anything wrong with it either i think if that makes you happy if that you do you but you could see here how some of the sickest people minds have really taken advantage of this places along with many others some cases where kids are walking to school, playgrounds abductions and all kinds of cases. This is just one example. And and a time where this was a scary topic and some people even stopped going out because of these patterns let me know what you think in the comments down below have you heard about this novel mr goodbar idea did you know about this patterns in bars I'd love to know. Thanks again for being there today, guys. I appreciate it. Come back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Mountain Time and check out my next upload for the month of October. If you missed the previous videos, please check them out. They will be on a playlist on the top of the screen in the description box. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you back here, hopefully, tomorrow.